So let's begin from where it all begins. Unit creation, how does it go? At first we start with a kind of looking at um, faction and weapon types and things like that. And we, we take a look at the battlefield and try to figure out what niche, niches are available in the battlefield. Um, and then we try to use that to inspire a mechanic on the battlefield. So we, we looked at the historical references, we used it to inspire us rather than limit ourselves. The Romans, for example, we kind of, we run through, uh, in the tiers, we run through examples of actual uh, units or functions within their army. So we, go, we run through like the Hastati to the Principes. Um, so you have like the Praetorians at the, um, in the late tiers and uh, they kind of represent the tent guards. And of course, there, there never really would have been like a whole unit of these guys, you know, a hundred of them dressed up and ready for war, but it's a really, really awesome concept. And these guys were like total, total badasses, right? So it's really cool to kind of take that idea and run with it a bit and turn it into something that makes it really exciting, you know, kind of. So inspired by, but not limited. We go with with what the people at the time would have yeah. felt was you, completely acceptable and normal, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see it in like the barbarian trees where they can just paint themselves with a slightly different colour or pattern <laughs> and that'll completely change them. Because they genuinely believe that painting racing stripes on themselves will make them go faster. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It works on we cars, can do that. so it should, it, it should work on people, I'm sure it does. <laughs> Sure it does. So, uh, <laughs> so we, yeah, you, you go with what, what we think that people in that period would believe could happen. So there are a lot of stats in this game. Um, the user doesn't necessarily know what they all particularly do or what stats uh, mm. there are. Mm. Uh, take us through a few, maybe, for these units. What are the important ones? There's so many of them, mm. and that was kind of one of the problems that we had was there's 22, roughly, stats in the game that you have to understand in depth to have any idea of how a unit's actually going to behave on the battlefield. Yeah. So um, one of the things we did recently was statistical groupings, where stats are grouped together. Melee defense and shield defense and charge deflect. Those kind of values would all come together uh, in a single stat, so it's called defense. Mm. And then we've got aggression, and we've got survivability, and we've got mobility. That, that will make it a lot clearer, especially to newer players. Mm. Uh, so instead of walking into the game and thinking, right, what does this unit do? <laughs> Oh no, there's 22 numbers for me to memorize and understand. Exactly. It, you can just see a nice breakdown of it's aggressive and it's not very defensive and it's really mobile. I know what the unit's going to do. The statistical groupings um, have also allowed us to have a really easy to understand comparison system <laughs> in the metagame. So uh, now when you mouse over a unit, it will always compare that unit to the unit that you currently have selected, which is something our players have, have really asked for. So now I can hear it in the forums already. But now you're hiding information from us. It's Not made it easier, no, blah, no, blah, no. blah. The vets, how are you dealing well, with again, so, the Because again, so the statistical groupings are a way of making the information that's there manageable. It's not hiding anything at all. That information is still there. You can still click on it. You can still read deep into the stats. And in fact, we uh, have ex already exposed a lot more of the stats than we did in the past. So Absolutely. Now you can actually look up what is my unit's speed or acceleration, mm. um, turn speed. All of these are stats that previously were nowhere to be seen, um, now you can see them. We talk about statistical groupings, so in the tooltips in the game, you mouse over, for example, the road and it says, this gives an advantage to light cavalry or light infantry. Uh, where does that come in? It's one of those interesting ones when it came to like, light, medium, heavy. Um, it, was like, it was like a label for units, but it wasn't really determining things properly. It was kind of like hiding information, really. So the labels heavy and light are gonna disappear? It's in something general? we're moving away from, definitely. And when it comes to the ground types as well, uh, there we've been looking at so many different ways of working with this system. It was a very complicated system. We had the issue, you know, like, uh, like in, this was an issue in balancing as well, that we had like uh, barbarian units really sort of relied on forest. And then it got to the point where we were like, well, we, what if we have a desert? Are we going to stick a forest in the desert? You know, like kind of, it started to kind of get a little bit like um, really, really restrictive. A unit should be able to perform on any map, right, given the right circumstance for it. And, and having it tied so closely to something like a ground type was really kind of making that difficult. So we've been looking at a lot of different ways. Of I, I think one key uh, or important thing to remember is that uh, even though we are moving away from those labels of light, medium, heavy, in terms of gameplay, absolutely nothing has changed uh, in that sense. You know, the, the uh, units are no longer, uh, it's not like we took something away from them. It's still absolutely exactly not. the same. No, no, no. That again, like, like we said, it, all, all, all it does 
with it, we've, with bringing in the statistical groupings, is just actually truthfully expose what's there and and actually really expose kind of how it's all working. You know, that's uh, that's the key. Talking about unit diversity, right? Oh. Um, it's one thing giving them a spear or a bit faster and stuff like that. With the commanders, it was all about uniqueness through abilities. Is it the same with the units? So with the units, um, their abilities kind of uh, really emphasize what they can do and almost who they are, right? We have multiple different sword units in the game, but the abilities that they have are really gonna like say, this is his signature, this is what they get up to. Again, formed combat, which is a really, really awesome ability um, where they all sort of line up at the front row, start attacking, and then they rotate out over time so that the, the damage basically gets spread out through the unit, you know? Um, and that kind of is a behavior that, as we were saying earlier, is something that we, we try and base in a historical route as well, and kind of like, how would these guys have actually fought in the front line, you know? We want to make sure that in each faction, there's at least one kind of unique unit type that is like the signature unit type for that faction. And, um, and that even if unit types are similar, let's say swordsmen, which exist both in the barbarians and the Roman tree, um, that they still play differently. Is it a rock, paper, scissors scenario where you've got your spearmen countering cavalry and you've got your swordsmen countering uh, spearmen? Like, how does it all work? So, Arena, Arena used to work kind of like that, um, where basically swords beat spears, spears, spears beat cavalry, cavalry beats archers, archers beat swords. So we move towards a more situational rock, paper, scissors, where each unit has a strength and a niche that it fills and another one where it fails. So for example, spearmen are fantastic at fighting you from the front, especially when they have phalanx active. But as soon as you so much as sneeze at the back of them, they just <laughs> fall over dead. So uh, if you try to fight a spearman, even if you're playing a swordsman who theoretically should beat a spearman back in that old rock, paper, scissors, if you fight him in the front, you're still going to lose. And the swordsman, their strength is to move around and flank. And as soon as you do that and fight on the swordsman's terms, he's going to win. Well, the Greeks had the ability to drop shields and run at the enemy, right? <laughs> had is the key had. word. So uh, what happened there? Why did that one? It didn't make there's a, there's a specific uh, word for a Greek that dropped their shield. Um, you can Google it, but it also um, it opens up so many edge cases and so many questions that were really really difficult to kind of uh, to kind of work around. Like, okay, so we've got this raise shields ability, but if you drop your shields and you can't get them back, then you can't ever raise shields again. You're kind of locked into this forever state of having dropped your shields. You know, there are things in the works to sort of look at alternatives to it. We're 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 working on something for it. Yeah. We're back in. The old patches we had drop shields and we noticed either nobody used it because it wasn't good enough or it was just slightly good enough and then everyone used it there was yeah. never a choice it was either yeah i'm just going to use it because it's amazing or I'm not going to use that it's not very good on that topic archers mm. they have no ammo right. right why don't they have a limited ammo we don't want to punish people for playing as mm. an archer you, you should be shooting that, that that's a good thing as long as you're not shooting your allies uh, but as long as you're as long as you're shooting and you're shooting something, why should you be punished for that? Why should at some point we be like, you've been doing really well the entire game, now you need to stop playing. No, just just stop. You didn't make a mistake. You didn't do anything wrong. You just now you, you don't get to play anymore. This is exactly the same with fatigue. Like you have three units, and if they get tired. There are, there are plenty of weaknesses that a unit can have, and running out of ammo is one that, again, just leaves you having nothing to do. There are so many other weaknesses and strengths that we can create and exploit that are fun for everyone most of the time, or at least, you know, if you get charged, then very briefly upsetting, but it's over quickly, you know? Like, that kind of thing, rather than leaving you stuck and having nothing to do for 10 minutes. And rather than, <laughs> rather than, like, taking away unlimited ammo for archers, we'd rather just give tools to other units to deal with it. Talking about fun mechanics, how is Friendly Fire fun? And also, how does it even work? Yeah, so Friendly Fire does add layers of tactical depth. Like, uh, whether you're gonna damage your allies or not changes how you approach a situation, how you approach a fight that's already happening. And that's, that's really important. It adds a lot to the arena, we feel. And we did try removing Friendly Fire entirely, and it just didn't, it didn't feel good, it didn't feel right. Everyone would just right click on the closest enemy unit they saw and not care. Um, so what we are, we did recognize was that Friendly Fire just wasn't communicated properly. Players didn't know when it's happening. So what we've done to try and address that is increase the level of UI. So um, 
now when you do friendly fire with a unit, you'll get a ping on your unit saying, this unit just did friendly fire. There'll be a little icon on your unit cards, which will say, this unit is doing friendly fire. You'll get a big banner right across the top of your screen saying, you are doing friendly fire, you need to deal with it. And then the damage dealt by friendly fire will also have a completely different color to damage dealt to enemies or dealt to your units. It'll be bright orange rather than red or blue. You are definitely doing friendly fire here. And at that point, there's no qualms over what's going on. You know, it's like friendly fire is happening. You need to stop it. Yeah, it's, it's give the tools to the players, let them. Yeah. And as long as we tell them about it, then they can, they can deal with it. They can make decisions based on that. So that's it for units. I hope we managed to answer all of your major questions and I'll see you on the battlefield.